every single song in your catalog has to have at least a thousand streams each before your catalog will be considered for monetization. Top use Spotify. Artists are seeing their music removed from DSPs for streaming fraud they didn't commit. Do I sound crazy now? DIY. DIYers, Spotify has been lying to you. They've been very misleading about all of the information leading up to the April 1st day when they established this threshold system that was supposed to say, hey, instead of paying you that 0.003, yeah, we've been too generous. We're going to give you 12 months to accumulate a thousand streams for your song before you're eligible for payment. However, there was some gray area that they weren't quite clear about. That's where we come in. And that's where a video comes up. Shout out to my friend Lloyd Lang. We've had so many great conversations over the last few months. Uh, Lloyd Lang is a trusted voice, specifically in the reggae space, but just in music in general. And he's been able to do a lot of predicting of things to happen in this space for independent artists when it comes to the streaming, when it comes to the digital music space in general and he right here drops a few bombs some things that are going to have you concerned if you're not ready Boom. on this instagram post he breaks down some things you may not have known about spotify's new monetization policies and how they're crazy and umg's involved and they're equally have gone mad. Listen to this. Is either Spotify gone batshit crazy or UMG has gone mad? But either way, you take it something no right in the attic. Now, we have been forewarned, forearmed, and in, and in some cases, even unforgiving about Spotify's new po uh, monetization policies. But it seems to me that every time they put out something new, the goalposts move again. Now, first of all, it was you need to get at least a thousand streams per song across the span of 12 months for you to be considered monetized. Then they move the goalposts again and say half of those streams have to be from unique people for you to be considered for monetization. Then they move the goalposts again and say every single song in your catalog has to get at least 1,000 streams for you to be considered for monetization. Let me repeat again. Let me repeat again. Every single song in your catalog has to have at least 1,000 streams each before your catalog will be considered for monetization. <laughs> Somebody gonna have to tell the truth and I'm gonna tell it. We don't gotta make up narratives when they're being so open about how they're screwing artists over. I had conversations in the DM with Lloyd Lang about kind of like how he was able to piece this information together because he is not telling a lie. The information they've been giving out has been in pieces. It's almost like they're releasing a press release letting the articles decode what they're saying and then they're giving a little bit more details as they go right and to be fair i'm sure that there's math that has to happen and there's things that they have to react to and there's information you can't disclose because there are what they call bad actors out there who are creating fictitious streams and trying to pimp the game Got it, even though Spotify has been the biggest pimp of them all. So it's important for them to protect their business model so that they can have a business to begin with. But if this information right here holds true, it mirrors Deezer's model of you need a thousand streams on their platform and 500 of them need to be unique listeners, right? Meaning that I can't play a song myself 200 times and it and it counts up to a thousand no 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 no. they're holding that information about how much that actually counts towards that quota that you must reach are you seeing how when you have that much control over someone's metrics how that could possibly be abused especially when it comes down to how much money you're gonna have to pay out as the person who holds the information can you see how that can be problematic are they batshit crazy or have they gone mad <laughs> Now, we understand that they're trying to purge the industry and they're trying to force back the independent independence into the underground by stifling our opportunity and our ways of making money. But this is batshit crazy. And so I have decided that instead of putting up my stuff on Spotify, I'd rather give it away free in the streets. So guess Sheesh. what? I, Lloyd Lang, one of the biggest advocates of Spotify in the Caribbean for the last 10 years, is abandoning the platform. 
I will be releasing music on every single other platform moving forward but Spotify and replacing Spotify with the streets. Because it better me go a street, go back 200 Jamaican people who love music for spend $1 US with me. $1, 100 Jamaican dollar for my music. And I would earn more money than 200,000 Spotify streams. Sure. So at the end of the day, boy, may I tell you the truth. Spotify makes no sense. And if you're still after this putting up your music on Spotify, you're wasting your time in the industry. Rather, you stop the music. Because if Spotify is the one, independent, independents are going to look forward to, to make a dollar. It's not going to happen. They're forcing us back into the streets. And we're going back into the streets to eat our food. Talk in the meantime, it. I'm asking all independent, independent artists to stand them ground. Stop you, Spotify. Take down your catalog off of Spotify. Because it makes no sense anymore for us as artists. They have devalued us and now have taken us to the point where they want to take our things for free. It makes no sense anymore. We're in this business for the art, but we're also in it to see people appreciate the art. And for a distributor or for a platform as Spotify to show such disdain and disrespect to the people that keep them alive, no man, them bad shit crazy. But as I say, it's just a matter of time before Spotify finds them way in the same place where MySpace they here mm. because if you don't forget and keep on forgetting it's independent musicians that form the core of music it's independent artists who become big artists that UMG can feed off of if independent artists finally stand them ground UMG and Spotify will understand so me I say to all independent independents moving forward since Spotify have their new guidelines let's have ours stop using Spotify it's length I'm out. Now, after I watched this video, I gave it a lot of thought because I don't create this content to create victims. We're DIYers. D -D -D -I -Y. We stand on our business. We treat our music as a business. Our music is a number one priority and we give it everything that we have. But when it comes to how we conduct the foundation of our business, it's on solid ground. That's what you're supposed to do. And there's another reason why I haven't publicly said, you know what, everybody stop using Spotify because everybody has different business models. And that will be a contradiction to the things that I teach here. But I understand why he's saying that. What I what I thought about this weekend, as I was cutting the grass, I was thinking about this conversation. I was like, you know what? I'm not going to give Spotify any props for being the unfair assholes that they have turned into or maybe they've always been. But I will look at it and see the opportunity that exists because of them being stingy. What this says is, hey, independent artists, not their words, my words, you as an independent artist, you say that you're an independent business, be independent. Stand on that. How are you going to do it without us? How would you do it if we took your music off like they did Ben Jordan? How are you going to do it? What is your independence that you're standing on if you're dependent upon us because of our business model of convenience for the listener? Why aren't you creating anything that's convenient for the listener? That's the way I take it. However, there's some information we got to get into the weeds of. And I think that it's stuff that we all need to talk about. We all need to see. There's another post that Lloyd Lang put up. He said, as of April 2024, to monetize 1000 streams on Spotify, 500 must be from unique listeners, which means at least 50 percent of all Spotify streams must be unique to meet the new minimum payment threshold. How it appears to me when I read into this information, and I look at it and I wasn't able to find anything specifically for this. Spotify has been really hush hush about it because they don't want people to abuse their system. But as I look at it, I'm like, oh, I get it. They're really buddy buddy right now with UMG because what they're getting ready to create is the new form of you need a record deal in order to get past this gatekeeping. They're getting ready to do some aggressive gatekeeping. Matter of fact, they already have been doing some aggressive gatekeeping. I think it's partly the reason why they've been so careful about what they're saying. Matter of fact, this was in November 2023. Here is their monetization eligibility guidelines. It says in November 2023, we announced new policies to help protect and strengthen our music royalty ecosystem for emerging and professional artists. As of April 2024, these policies are in effect for all artists. Starting in 2024, April, tracks must reach a threshold of at least a thousand streams in the previous 12 months to be included in the recorded music royalty pool calculation. There's also a minimum number of unique listeners. This is where it starts to become what Fat Joe said last week about that funny math, because they get to determine what a unique listener is. They get to determine ultimately 
what is a bad actor, which is somebody who's faking streams versus somebody who's not faking streams. In that conversation that I had with Lloyd Lang, he also brought this to my attention. I'm so glad for the internet, the way it's currently constructed, because I don't know if it's going to always be like this. It's funny how Spotify has been so aggressive to get rid of the bad actors, the people who are taking the money from the hardworking artists. Funny enough, <laughs> August 31st, 2016, Music Business Worldwide posted this article. The headline reads, Spotify is making its own records and putting them on their own playlists. Somebody gonna have to tell the truth and I'm gonna tell it. In 2016? Before the AI that we currently know? What do you mean? Music Business Worldwide understands that Spotify is instructing producers to create tracks, typically without vocals, which fit certain genres and themes, including jazz, chill, and peaceful piano playing. Hmm. Why would Spotify be instructing producers to write and record tracks of this nature? Bingo. To appear on some of its own relaxing first party playlists, which boasts millions of followers between them. MBW is 100% sure that these tracks exist. We've even heard some of them. We promised our sources we wouldn't tell you who the fake artists' names are, so we won't. But we can tell you that we're aware of five Spotify-owned tracks that each have more than 500,000 streams and one with over a million. <laughs> Somebody gonna have to tell the truth and I'm gonna tell it. Wait, 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 wait. You trying to tell me in 2006 they hired some producers and they said, we just want instrumental music so that we can make fake artists on our profile so that we can now put them in our playlist, run the streams up on them because it's high visibility. And then years later, we got takedowns because of fake artists on the platform. Make it make sense. Huh. And this article here from Variety written by Ari Herstand. The headline reads, takedown fails. Artists are seeing their music removed from DSPs for streaming fraud they didn't commit. First paragraph says, on, on February 9th, the electronic artist Ben Jordan, who we talked about on the video here, who performs under the uh, alias, The Flashbulb, was attempting to reference one of his tracks, his songs during a recording session, but couldn't access his music on Spotify or Tidal. He thought at first that his phone was glitching, but then he began receiving messages from fans asking why he'd removed all of his music from the streaming platform. Jordan, who to date has earned more than 500,000 in streaming royalties and relies on them for a significant part of his income has been unwittingly caught up in streaming services new crackdown on fraud. TuneCore, his distributor, TuneCore, remember that, has received a notice from Spotify indicating that significant artificial stream activity has been detected on his music. TuneCore uh, summarily removed all 23 of his albums from all streaming platforms without a warning. The article goes on to say that streaming fraud is one of the most serious problems facing the music industry because most streaming platforms operate on a pro rata payment model in which payment is based on an artist's share of total streams. Fraudsters have managed to steer millions of dollars away from legitimate artists, songwriters, labels, and publishers. And because DIY distributors like TuneCore and DistroKid allow virtually anyone to distribute unlimited audio to streaming platforms for around $20 a year, at a volume that is extremely difficult to police effectively, the barrier to entry is vir virtually non-existent. Let's go on down here to a few other parts I want to draw your attention to because it's showing notices that are now popping up from all the distributors because we know that Spotify said that it was going to start fining the distributors for music that was distributed through them that it found to be generating fictitious streams. Interesting. In a statement from TuneCore CEO Andrea Gleason, the VP of Artist uh, Support, she tells Variety, in order to effectively prevent bad actors, keep hearing that term, from diluting the royalty pool for real artists with real fans, all companies need to be a part of the solution. She writes, to safeguard legitimate artists, TuneCore diligently removes content reported by DSPs for high rates of fraudulent stream activity. Despite best efforts, some legitimate artists have become victims of malicious streaming fraud or have been taken advantage of by fraudsters, deflecting, masquerading as digital marketing or promotional companies. We are actively refining our policies and practices in order to foster an equitable streaming landscape, empowering all artists to thrive. 
We've talked about DistroKid, who on the other hand has implemented a strike system by which artists are notified that Spotify has reported significant artificial streaming activity on their music. The distributor advises the artist to cease promotional activity. You know, those playlists that you pay for placement on, assuming that the artist is responsible for the streaming violations. Or if the artist is unaware of the fraudulent activity, they are advised to remove the track from Spotify or face fines or an outright ban. The artist is then required to answer a series of questions before being allowed to access their account and their funds. Somebody gonna have to tell the truth and I'm gonna tell it. If you're playing in their house, which is called streaming, it's getting really hot, isn't it? Interesting how they're starting to dictate what you can and can't make money off of, and they're even bending those rules a bit. My words, not Ari's. Nah, and I'm still not content. Till I'm dominated in every single continent. My shit go stupid. You don't think then use your common sense. I did your wire and I know that I'm a brother. When they play that new king, all the DOIs go crazy. All the DOIs go crazy. When they play that new king, all the DOIs go crazy. All the DOIs go crazy. It goes on to talk about a few folks who have seen this firsthand. Singer-songwriter Jonah Baker, who became popular with acoustic covers on YouTube, now makes over 200000 annually from streaming revenue and has over 150 million streams across multiple platforms. He received a strike notice from DistroKid indicating significant artificial streams on his music, but says he has no idea why. He wasn't paying for any service to boost his streams. DistroKid customer service advised him to remove the track or face a ban. What? So he removed it in the hope that it wouldn't happen with any of, it, of his other music. DistroKid's language in the notices indicates that it is due to Spotify's policy. They keep playing tennis back and forth of whose it is and then requires the artist to affirm via a quiz and a checkbox. Doc, all of this shit just to put your music out? Y'all tired? Are y'all tired? I'm t I, 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 I already moved all these platforms. Are y'all tired yet? A rep for Spotify denied that the platform has any strike or warning system and does not require artists to remove songs in these instances. They playing in your face. They're playing in your face. I'm going to end it off on these last two paragraphs and we'll get to the next thing. However, DistroKid offers its own promotional services for users on a plan that costs $89.99 per year. It's the Playlister feature. We talked about it in one of the videos how people were attributing using this feature to the notice of them getting fraudulent streams where you're able to basically put your music into a wheel of playlists. And then they are then placing your music on these playlists that are curated by DistroKid. Only problem is a lot of people who had their music removed had that in common, as well as using platforms like Submit Hub. So it says its playlister feature enables artists to find contact information for third party user generated Spotify playlist editors. I didn't know they had third party ones they were doing, which is often a link to a company called Submit Hub. Have you used them? That company is a platform where third party playlist curators charge a few dollars to listen to a track and consider including it on their playlist. Dog, I am sick of these platforms taking artists away from what they should be focused on, which are the people who have already adopted, the people who are already on board to get you in front of potentially new people that you can't verify are real or not. And you're paying money to get away from the people that count the most in hopes of getting to more. Although platforms like Submit Hub are not technically against Spotify's terms of service, because the playlist is charged for consideration, not inclusion, it is widely known that many of these playlists are fraught with bot activity that is likely to cause artificial streams. Burn the whole shit down. Viper, an artist who uses DistroKid for distribution, had her song removed with, the, with a notice from the company indicating 100% artificial streams on her track Fusion. The song had been included in official Spotify editorial and algorithmic playlists, generating nearly, nearly 14,000 streams over several weeks, but it was removed by DistroKid. It seemed highly improbable that 100% of the streams for a track included on official Spotify playlists would be artificial. It then concludes here. It says, although distributors and streaming services frequently use language that places the blame on the artist for fraudulent activity detected on their accounts, it has become clear that artists are often caught in the middle of a crossfire between streaming services, distributors, and fraudsters attempting to game the system for their own financial gain. While it's understandable that some artists are trying to skirt the rules, 
The solution to streaming fraud should not come at the expense of innocent artists or independent artists, I'm going to say. For further proof that I feel like these folks are just playing in your face, Spotify plans to let subscribers, your listeners, speed up songs and pay rights holders when these modified tracks are streamed. Great tool for the listener. But for a game where they have said very publicly, Daniel Eck has publicly said you win at Spotify through quantity. They have now removed one of the things that you can use to bulk up that quantity, which is putting up like French Montana did 126 songs that are all different versions of the same song. Right. They're sped up versions, slow down versions, things that are generally used on social media. Now they're saying they're going to give listeners the option and then they'll give you a share of that. <laughs> they're playing in your face. They're playing in your face. Now, something that was really interesting that also came across my timeline. So there's a new alliance that is finding their way. We've got questions as DIYers about TuneCore, DistroKid, Spotify. What the hell are you doing with our money? A part of the way that these platforms are combating what's going on, because let's not act like streaming fraud is not a real thing. There are people who are going to, of course, abuse what's going on here. Have you heard of the Music Fights Fraud Alliance? I didn't. It wasn't big news. I had to go search for this. It is a group that has a membership where their mission is to eradicate streaming fraud. It says Music Fights Fraud is a global task force aimed at eradicating streaming fraud. We represent for the first time all corners of the music industry aligning as a united front to combat fraud in music streaming. Our mission is to ensure that the global music streaming market is fair and that all members actively contribute to solutions intended to balance the equity of its operations. They're trying to save their bottom line. As an alliance, our members hope to detect, prevent, mitigate and enforce anti-fraud measures, thereby moving closer to an industry where fraud has no place. Dog, look at these names. <laughs> Look at them. Who have we been talking about? Who have we been talking about? DIYers, who have we been talking about? Here's their members thus far. Spotify, TuneCore, DistroKid. They're all united to help you and get down to this streaming issue because it's taking money out of your pockets. No, they could care less about your pockets. It's taking money out of their pockets. So they came together and decided, hey, instead of us as distributors getting fined, let's figure out something because we we all benefit from the business of each other. Let's figure this shit out because the where the direction is going right now. I'm a little bit nervous. I ain't gonna hold you. I'm a little bit nervous. Talk about them. And this is a solution they came up with. But thankfully, we live in a time where we can ask questions to chat GPT. I had to go over their policy and I asked the questions about how could this be problematic for independent artists and DIYers. DIY. I had it read the website, do research. I sourced the research and this is what it came back with. The first problem it may present with this music fights fraud is the incentive for control. Major industry players forming alliances like music fights fraud could potentially use fraud prevention as a pretext to control market dynamics. This might disproportionately affect independent artists who rely heavily on platforms like Spotify and Apple Music for exposure and revenue. Two, impact on independent artists. By setting stringent anti-fraud measures, these entities could make it harder for new or independent artists to succeed. If measures are too aggressive, they could inadvertently flag legitimate content, which is already happening, which could be particularly damaging to artists without the resources to appeal or navigate this system. Three, market monopoly concerns. The involvement of major distributors in streaming platforms could raise concerns about market mon monopolization, where these platforms might prefer promoting content that guarantees more controlled revenue streams possibly for partners like UMG, potentially sidelining independent creators who bring diversity to the music scene. Four, transparency issues. Skepticism might also arise from a lack of transparency about how decisions are made within such alliances. Without clear guidelines and open communication, you know, with the foundation of their businesses, the independent artists, the artists in general, about what constitutes fraud, there could be significant room for biased enforcement fucking disgusting do you see what time period we're in i equate this to 
When you are a rapper coming up in the 90s, even to a certain degree, the early 2000s, and people told you, you're not a professional unless you can be on mainstream TV, the big broadcasting channels, the MTVs, the BETs. In order to get there, you got to have relationships. In order to get the relationships, you got to be aligned with the big dogs, a.k.a. getting a major label record deal. They were the gatekeepers at that point in time. However, with the emergence of Internet, with the emergence of social media, the playing field got leveled just a bit. And right when you thought that independence would be the thing that would dominate, they go on the offensive. Not only do they rebrand what independent is, we talked about how they talked, some of these entities talked about how Usher is now considered an independent artist because he performed at the Super Bowl and he wasn't signed to anyone and he's the first independent artist to. So they're rebranding that. Not only are they changing the way that you can get paid, not only are they changing the parameters for what it means to be a unique listener, not only can they say, hey, you know what? The numbers is getting juiced. Let's just take you down because I think it's fictitious. They're playing in your face. This is now the new form of gatekeeping and it's happening. Perhaps I was really, really early to the party and I sounded crazy to a lot of people. Do I sound crazy now? They are creating a system where it's you're either in here with us. You're either aligned with one of our partners like a UMG or it's going to be hell for you. It's going to be an uphill battle. And even when we give you ways to rectify a streaming situation that may be a mistake on our end, we won't take accountability. No, no, no. We allow you to take the song down and re-upload it to our platform, which then at the end of the year boosts those numbers that says this amount of songs got uploaded to streaming, which of course is going to be skyrocketed this year because of all the people that have had their shit taken down. Nasty work. DIYers, this is no longer an option. If you're someone who loves this craft, you're going to do it anyways. None of this stuff affects you. But if you're someone who says, I'm going to make a business out of this craft that I love, understand when the writing is on the wall. It's interesting that people have blurred the lines between what a Spotify listener is and what a fan is, especially a super fan. There's levels of super fan, but nobody ever dices down what a listener is and how likely they are to buy hard tickets to a show, how likely they are to buy physical music, how likely they are to even be a real person. Since folks got 100% fake streams out here, but you got listeners. I'm here to tell you DIYers, you may have 200,000 listeners. It's a high likelihood they're not all fans. It's a reason they don't use fans as a metric. Just a thought, DIYers. They're playing in your face. Those are my thoughts. Let me know what you think. DIY. DIYers, if you enjoyed this content, make sure that you hit the like button and maybe even consider subscribing. Come on, man. Stop, stop being greedy. Peace.